Hello everyone. Today I'm going to quickly prove this theorem for y'all, which states that every bounded sequence in the reals has a convergent subsequence. This is a huge deal because there's a lot of bounded sequences that are really, really weird and we that are kind of difficult to construct actual convergent subsequences for them. So this can be a very useful tool in a lot of more advanced proofs. Now, the reason why I state in R is just for simplicity, but it turns out this is true for any complete space, okay? So if you're familiar with what a complete space means, it's essentially a space such that every Cauchy sequence converges to something inside that space. And so R is, R is a great example of a complete space. And yeah, let's, let's jump right into this. So looking at this theorem, I, I don't know what my sequence is. The only information I have is that it's some bounded sequence. And it lives inside some interval from negative m to m, and it's going to stay in that interval for all n. And it can jump around as wherever it wants, and we need to find some convergent subsequence of this thing. So the key idea for this proof is to realize that if I just have one more condition, okay, if I just add um, monotone, then I automatically have a convergent sequence. That is my lemma here, is that every bounded monotone sequence in R is convergent. And we can see that this is true almost immediately if we just take the limit of the sequence X sub N, okay? It'll just be equal to the supremum or infimum, depending if it's monotone increasing or decreasing, okay? The supremum of X sub N as N approaches infinity. if x sub n is increasing. All right, so, and of course, if it's decreasing, the limit of the sequence will be the infimum of all the terms. And since the limit exists, um, we know that it is less than infinity by the boundedness of the sequence, and therefore the sequence must converge specifically to this supremum. So let's use this lemma and how we're going to use it is we're going to try and find or construct a monotone subsequence of a bounded sequence. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let me just, okay. I'm going to let X sub N be bounded in R. Now, take the supremum and I'm going to set this supremum of, of all the elements of the sequence equal to m. And again, we know it's less than infinity by the boundedness of the sequence. So if, um, if this supremum of x sub n is, does not actually belong to the sequence itself, okay? So this is case one. If the supremum M doesn't actually belong to the sequence, then we know immediately that we can construct this monotone subsequence because we can always get closer and closer to the supremum, okay? So here's my supremum M, and I'm always gonna be able to get closer and closer to that M because it's not contained within the sequence. And if I couldn't get closer and closer, we would have a contradiction because say there was like some element that was the closest I could possibly get to M, well then that element would have to either be maximal or, um, or I could find a smaller upper bound of the sequence. And so M would no longer be the supremum, which is the smallest upper bound, okay? So 
if, if the supremum is not contained in the sequence, then we can always construct a monotone increasing sequence of terms that gets closer and closer to the maximal, to the supremum, which is, which is not contained in the sequence. Okay, so, so this is uh, immediately, we know that a monotone increasing subsequence must exist that approaches M, okay? And now the second case is if the sequence actually has a maximal element. So suppose that M is equal to, let's just call it X sub M, and it's within the sequence, okay? So now all of a sudden, the sequence actually hits its supremum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to t let that M be the first element of my subsequence, okay? So then let, I'm gonna call this M1, let x m1 be the first element and now i'm going to remove that element from my sequence so i'm going to now let m2 equal to the supremum of x of sorry of n not equal to m of the sequence x sub n and i'm going to see okay now does m2 exist and if m2 doesn't exist then again we go back to this first case where we can always construct an increasing uh, monotone subsequence and so we're immediately we fall back to case one and we're done with the proof because we've constructed a monotone subsequence. So if M2 is not within sequence of Xn, uh, reduces to case one, one, and there exists a subsequence X sub N sub K that approaches M2 monotone increasing. Okay. And this is true for all of the M's. So, so I'll let you take a moment and think what, what's the next step here? Why, why are we doing this? Well, essentially I'm going to let M2 be the next element of my subsequence. So I'm going to take M1, M2, M3, dot, 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 dot. And now all of these, since we've, by definition, these are actually elements of the sequence, okay? So this is X, M2. And so all of these are, are physical elements of our sequence. And therefore this is actually a subsequence of X sub N. And it's monotone decreasing, okay? Because we've we've taken maximal elements and we've removed those maximal elements from our sequence and we've taken the maximum of the remaining ones so so m m sub one by definition is greater than or equal to m sub two is greater than or equal to m sub three because we're taking the maximum of a subset of the original sequence so we've constructed a monotone decreasing sequence and this has to have a limit which is its infimum right so either this sequence exists and it's monotone decreasing and its limit, it converges to its infimum or for one, M, for one of these M's, there exists an M sub N such that M sub N is not within X sub N. But then we know that there exists some X sub N sub K that converges to M sub N by the above discussion, because 
if we have a supremum of a, of a countably infinite set and that supremum doesn't belong to that set, then we can always find elements that are arbitrarily close to that supremum. And so by doing that, we can construct a monotone increasing subsequence. So th this is a really beautiful proof because we've essentially constructed, and let's go back to, to the original question here. We've constructed using the fact that the sequence is bounded, we've shown that it has to have a monotone subsequence and that subsequence can either be increasing or decreasing. It doesn't matter. And in fact, if we don't have one, we definitely have the other. And by doing that, we've found that since there's a monotone subsequence, that monotone sub subsequence has to be convergent because it, it is also bounded. All right, hope that helps and have a nice day.